<coughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for gathering here as we come to the, to the penultimate day of Advent, the next to last day of Advent. This, uh, those of you that are here celebrating with us at the church and those watching uh, online in, in the free stream. Uh, today's celebration is being offered for Jerry Lengel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge your sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. This is a reading from the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lyre. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord, that he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. 
O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives that has that name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, <clears throat> John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all those matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord is with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, today's gospel reminds us that sometimes even ourselves, we become speechless like Zachariah, especially the things that we are supposed to do, and we don't do it according to God's will. Zachariah's lack of faith, a few days ago we heard how Zachariah was silenced for his lack of faith. Today, he was able to speak again because he accepted the words of the angel and bore witness to the name John being given to his son in the temple. Zachariah's transformation from doubter to believer can help us to see how powerful faith can be and how empty life is without it. Without faith, we are blind and mute to spiritual realities all around us. With faith, we can always find reasons to proclaim the glory of God. We are all speechless like Zachariah. We can try to explain everything with science and mathematical certainty but there is a part of us that cannot be explained away with reason. As we try to hold on to certainties and measurables, we experience in our own flesh the passing nature of it all. Our life can lose meaning and direction if we close ourselves off to the surprises of God. In our desire to have control of our life, we lose the ability to wonder and marvel at God's unexpected or mysterious movements. We are speechless, like Zachariah, because we cannot find words to enter into or share with others the mysteries of the eternal. And also we have the power to speak as Zachariah did it. At the moment he chose the name of John, Zachariah acknowledged that his reason could not explain all that had happened over the past nine months. By choosing a name with no link to his family, he let go of his plan for his family and opened his heart to marvel at the goodness of God. And that's why we say always, God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. 
He believed if faith opens our hearts, minds, and eyes to wonder with simplicity at all of his goods of God. By entering into the mystery of God through faith, we see the world in a new and meaningful way that gives us a voice, God's voice, to share with the world, proclaiming the wonders we have experienced as, he, as his redemptive work in our souls. Here, we are called to embrace God's voice, to listen God's voice. How are we going to do it? Let us follow the footsteps of our brother, Zachariah to listen from the heart, to be ready to be transformed in our journey of lives. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Gracious Lord, we thank you as we are preparing to celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us courage always to embrace and even to strengthen our faith. And for this we pray. Lord, we know life is a journey. And even faith always grows as we open ourselves to listen, to humble ourselves so that we can reach to your presence. And for this, we pray. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for all our brothers and sisters who are aspiring to see and to embrace the loving care of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for this, we pray. Let us remember that Christmas is for each and every one. Christmas is for our families. Christmas is for hope. Let us continue to have that hope which always transforms our lives. And for this, we pray. We pray for those who have died, and especially for those who have died with COVID-19. God, give them eternal rest. And for this, we pray. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will come for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will come our spiritual drink. Yes. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Father, and the glory of all our May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, yes. right and just to our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and the dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat when we this, this bread, bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in partaking with the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mary our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Jerry Lingo, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died of no mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but into the 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil. Gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. If you're receiving communion, follow the directions of the usher, please. Come forward with your hands folded, uh, your mask on, and receive the host in your hand, move to the side to one of the yellow dots. Pull your mask down and receive the Eucharist. Pull your mask back up, covering your nose and your mouth, and return to your seat. Thank you.
Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of Dick and Tom, I would like to say thank you for coming, for participating for this celebration, and also for your prayers. And for those who are watching live stream mass, I say thank you for your prayers and for your participation. As we know now, we have only one day to celebrate Christmas. Let us continue to focus on our brothers and sisters, to pray for them, for their struggles, for their healthy, but also to remember them. Just call them, say how are they are doing it, because we are not going to be the way we usually do, to have dinner together. Just call and say, hello, how are you doing it? It's very important. And for some of you have been asking me, Tomorrow morning, we have the Mass at 9.15 also, for on 24th, so you're most welcome. And we have the Masses at evening, 4, 6.30, and 9. You're most welcome. The Lord be with you. With your May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.